So, uh, thank you and uh, hello, I'm Maike Fischer and I want to tell you today um, about my PhD project and about one project that is about the characterization of toxic venom components from the African assassin bug Psytala horida. Um, Heteroptera or the true bugs are a subgroup of the Hemiptera and what all Heteropterans have in common are these piercing sucking mouth parts, which you can see here in this picture. And with these um, elongated mouth parts, they inject saliva into their food, pre-digest it, and then suck up the liquefied components to further digest them in the gut. And in this group of true bugs, we have um, a very wide diversity. We have phytophagous bugs. Uh, many of you probably know some pest species um, that are important, economically important. We also have some fungivorous heteropterans, even have um, some blood feeding ones that are vectors of very important diseases. And we have the predatory heteroptera, which I focus on. And these predatory heteropterans, which you can see here in this picture, um, they feed on other insects or even small vertebrates like this fish here and um, they have evolved a venomous saliva so they use venom to immobilize their prey they have paralytic components um, to pre-digest it like all the other heteroperans too and they can use their venom also defensively and that sting can really hurt a lot my research organism is the African assassin bug, Psytala horida. It's also called the horrid king assassin bug. It's really large and looks pretty nasty. And it preys mainly on invertebrates and um, it can have a very painful defensive sting, which I fortunately have not experienced yet, but uh, it's probably really painful. Psytala horida um, is um, a reduvidae which is a um, group of mainly predatory heteroptera, except for the triatomina, which are blood feeding. And when we look at the salivary or the venom gland complex, you can see it's pretty large and it consists of three parts, the anterior main gland here, the, um, the orange part, the posterior main gland, which is this large red part and an accessory gland. And I will focus today on the posterior main gland or PMG, the red part. And um, with proteomics and transcriptomics, we found out that the PMG venom is the venom that is really injected into prey and not the AMG or AG venom, only the PMG venom is injected and it causes um, several effects like uh, cytotoxic, antibacterial, digestive, paralytic and hemolytic effects on the prey or um, yeah. And when we look at the composition of the PMG venom, um, here you can see an SDS page of uh, the venom mixture and you see it's pretty complex in, in the protein bands. And when we look at the uh, composition of the um, contacts we found in the transcriptome, you see them here um, grouped into um, groups of putative function in percent. And you see that um, the majority of uh, contacts belong to um, proteases here, um, the light blue part. Uh, we also have um, other digestive enzymes. We have paralytic peptides. And also what is important is uh, that green part here on the bottom, we have a lot of proteins with unknown function and we don't know what they do or what they're there for. And um, this is really interesting for us. And that leads us to my research question. So as I said, um, we have a lot of effects, um, cytotoxic, antibacterial, digestive, hemolytic, and paralytic effects. And since we have so many unknown and uncharacterized proteins, um, we want to know what compounds are responsible for these effects. And today I focus on the cytotoxic, antibacterial, and hemolytic effects. Uh, the good thing is that uh, we have a transcriptome and a proteome already of the venom glands and we get large quantities of venom of these huge bugs. So that's um, really good to start with. 
and um, we took an extract of PMG glands and fractionated it with FPLC and then screened the fractions for activity and analyzed these active fractions um, with LCMS. Uh, for the fractionation, we used cation exchange chromatography. So we took our PMG extract and in our buffer, our proteins were mostly um, positively charged and, and then they bound to the negatively charged column. Um, and with an increasing sodium chloride concentration, we could step-by-step -step elude the proteins and collect different venom fractions. And here you see SDS pages of our 43 fractions, which we got. And you can see that it worked pretty well. Um, some fractions like uh, here on the, the upper right side are pretty complex. Um, some are less complex, but in total it worked pretty fine. And due to time reasons, I will in the following only uh, refer to two fractions, which were the most active fractions in our assays. And these are um, here fraction A and fraction B. And you see that they are um, actually pretty similar in their banding patterns. And uh, these were the two um, most active fractions. Um, I will start with the effects on cell viability. And for that, we used um, insect cells, which we treated with our venom fractions. And uh, then the cells either died or didn't die. And then um, after a certain time, we treated them with a chemical called MTT. And um, when the cells were alive, the, the MTT is reduced and it forms a blue crystal or blue crystals. Um, and you can measure that color um, or the absorbance of that color. And with that, we can measure the viability because dead cells don't form these blue crystals and alive cells form these blue crystals. And um, you can see the cell viability of these insect cells in percent. And here are the um, treatments. Uh, you see that the negative control, so um, the cells without any treatment were um, alive and our positive control with a cytotoxic uh, chemical, um, almost all of them died as well as in the unfractionated PMG sample. And both of our fractions also significantly um, affected the cell viability, especially fraction A caused um, almost 100% um, um, cell death. So we can see, see that both fractions reduce insect cell viability. We also tested uh, the effects on bacterial growth. For that, we used E. coli cells, which we treated with our venom fractions. And then we measured the growth over 24 hours, and um, we could measure the OD over this time frame, and with that, um, refer to the bacterial growth. And here you see um, the bacterial growth um, in percent again, and you see again the negative control. Um, yeah, they grew pretty well, but all the other treatments, um, positive control, the unfractionated PMG venom, and both of our fractions almost. Um, completely inhibited growth of E. coli cells. So we can say that both fractions inhibited the bacterial growth. Um, then we tested uh, the effects on red blood cells. So we took um, horse erythrocytes and um, then we applied our venom and either they were lysed or not lysed. And when you centrifuge them, you can measure the absorbance of the supernatant, which is red if um, we have a hemolytic reaction or um, if not then it's clear and with that we can measure the hemolysis um, of horse erythrocytes when we apply our venom and here you can see the horse erythrocyte integrity in percent um, again the negative control looked fine and our positive control with a um, with the triton x100 um, completely lysed um, the cells and here the effects are not as strong as in the other assays, as you can see, but still uh, we see an effect of the, PM, the unfractionated PMG venom. We had um, almost 50% um, hemolysis and both of our fractions slightly affected the um, erythrocyte integrity. And in this case, fraction B had a stronger effect than fraction A, which is also quite interesting. 
because in the other essays it was the other way around. So we can see that both fractions can lyse these erythrocytes. So we wanted to find out um, what proteins are present in our active fraction. And I will show you the um, proteomic analysis of um, fraction A. Here again, um, the SDS page of, um, of this fraction. And um, we found four main protein classes, which um, is first the gelsulin family, then a venom protein family two family, um, a lot of trypsins, and we found so-called radiolysins. Um, gelsulin is actually a multifunctional calcium binding protein, um, which is um, often found in venoms, but um, the role of this gasoline is not quite clear. Um, it is um, suggested that it might um, play a role in actin depolymerization, but we don't really know this. The venom protein family two proteins are uncharacterized, so we don't know anything about them, what function they have. Trypsins are mainly there for protein digestion or regulation of other proteins. And the radiolysins are putative membrane pore forming proteins um, that has, have been found in other heteropteran species too. And I will focus now on the radiolysin, which has first been found in a hematophagous bug in triatoma and festans. It is activated by proteolysis and forms voltage dependent channels and membranes. And it has been shown that in uh, the trilysin from triatoma and festans lies protozoan, bacterial and mammalian cells. And um, yeah, so the signal peptide of this trilysin is cleaved off and then the acidic pro region is also cleaved off and then we have a positively charged lytic region and a non-lytic region. And um, we found similar structures in our radiolysins. So we suggest that radiolysin could be responsible for cytotoxic antimicrobial and hemolytic effects, but we could not confirm this yet. <laughs> So the next steps are, um, we have these three main candidate proteins or protein classes, and we want to heterologously express the gelsulin and venom protein family two proteins and synthesize the lytic peptides of our radiolysins. And then we want to test individual proteins and combinations of proteins for activity and resolve with that the function and the mode of action of our proteins. However, <laughs> I'm still, uh, working on this, so I cannot show you any, any interesting results about this. And um, hopefully I have some results soon. To summarize this, um, I analyzed um, the venom components um, or the toxic venom components of this large gland part, the PMG of the African assassin bug Psytala horida, um, because it has cytotoxic, antibacterial, paralytic, digestive, and hemolytic effects. We fractionated the venom with FPLC, and we found especially one fraction, the fraction A, which had significant effects on cell viability, E. coli growth, and hemolysis. And we found four main proteins in, these, um, in this fraction, or protein classes, and um, the gasoline venom protein family, two proteins, trypsins, and radiolysins. However, we cannot say which proteins are responsible for the observed effects, but I hope that I can soon tell you more about that. So I would like to thank a lot of people, mainly my supervisors, Heiko, David, and Andreas, and Nicole, and also our department leader, Martin, and everyone who was involved in these projects and um, was helping me with experiments or with discussions. And I would like to thank my group, uh, the Department of Insect Symbiosis, a very new group now. And I would like to thank you for your attention. And I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs>